uh, this idea of urban farming and indoor farming and soilless farming. Joining us now, Matthew Howe, the founder of Growbricks, and Lauren Sorkin, the director and strategic advisor for Growbricks as well. Growbricks is a, a new soilless vertical farming designed to blend qualities of an indoor green with, with actually growing food. Love it. Good morning to you, Matthew and Lauren. Thanks for having us. Yeah, good morning. Great to have you with us. Lauren, speak up just a little bit, okay? I think you might just a little bit soft. Uh, we want to make sure we hear all the great things you're going to say to us. And Matthew, first of all, take us through, uh, I've just given a, a little bit of a description of Grow Bricks, but give us a little bit more around what Grow Bricks is, Grow Bricks is and does. Sure. So vertical farming is, is a fairly broad term. And what you mentioned earlier, it's kind of all about uh, when, when we hear about it in the press now, it's basically doing it indoors and soillessly and with technology. Um, but it's usually in done in warehouses or factories or shipping containers. So it's very much out of sight. But the, the idea is basically to bring the farm closer to where the food is needed, which mm -hmm. in this example would be would be cities. So and on a commercial bricks. scale, a commercial yes. scale, right? Not just individuals yeah. doing something in their homes, right? Yes, exactly. So what, what yeah. Growbricks is all about is taking this one step further. And we take some of the technology elements of these indoor farms, and then we move them right out into the communities. So I suppose the concept is with farmers, we just do the farming at your place rather than ours. And your place can be a corporate office, a restaurant, a bar, a hotel, a school, um, and I suppose, you know, we bring the farm and the farmer's market straight to your doorstep so that you can really appreciate this concept of locally grown produce and you can see it and you can touch it, taste mm -hmm. it and you can, you know, it's basically bringing this, this farm to table concept to the next level. Mm. And that's what Growbricks is all about here in Singapore. And that's the mission nice. that we're on. And Lauren, the timing is perfect, of course. The government has stipulated the, the 30 by 30. They want to produce 30% of their own food uh, by the year 2030. COVID demonstrated something that we were all acutely aware of in Singapore, <clears throat> but it really literally came home to roost in the sense that nothing came home to roost. We couldn't get any food for a while there. Just uh, underlining the importance of food security and potential scarcity for Singapore. So what attracted you? You're the director and strategic advisor. What attracted you, uh, Lauren, to this project and how you think it could really benefit Singapore? Uh, well, it's a great, it's a great question, Neil. Um, you know, my, my day job is I run a global network called the Resilient Cities Network. So we're 97 cities globally working to be stronger in a world where things go wrong. So you've got to look at what are the biggest threats to you? And, and you just talked about them, right? We've all lived them uh, these past few years. And we know that our food systems, uh, industrial agriculture is failing us, right? It's failing us health-wise, it's failing us in terms of climate and the environment, and it's really failing us in terms of the economy, right? If you look around Singapore, we've got an 11% obesity rate, right? And we've got 1.7 million Singaporeans at risk of obesity. And we've got a climate crisis that is really existential and 14 and a half percent of emissions come from industrial agriculture another six percent come from food waste so when when you talk about what attracted me to the Grobix project and coming onto the board and, and becoming an advisor it's because this kind of vertical farming solution is something that has multiple benefits Right, and we don't have time in in a global sense to invest in singular solutions. Right, a, a solution to the climate problem, a, a solution to our food supply chain problem. We've got to find things that bring us multiple benefits. And bringing a vertical farming system into your home makes you part of the solution, and it really helps your health. It helps the health of the climate, our planet. Um, and it makes us more food secure. It helps us to reach towards that 30 by 30 goal um, and really be part of the solution here in our own homes and our own companies. Mm, we're speaking with Matthew Howe, the founder of Growbricks, and Lauren Sorkin, the director and strategic advisor also for Growbricks, and the executive director 
uh, for the Resilient Cities Network. Matthew, back to you. The you know the typical typical corporate farm would be hundreds of acres, maybe even a thousand acres if you look at corn producers and wheat and all those. Uh, uh, one of our uh, regular listeners, Tom, had asked me to ask you about the ability to scale, the ability to actually make this work economically. Um, you know, is there any way to compete with the size and scale of the industrial farm? Well, there are already a number of indoor high-tech farms that are basically currently looking at doing this, and there's a number of pop, mum, number popping up in Singapore. And in, and in, in order to compete, you really do have to have scale. So you right. and you're going to have to employ the best technologies. A lot of these companies now are using you know cutting-edge sensors, IoT, AI, and I believe that that's going to be the way that most leafy greens are going to be grown in the future. But that's not really what we do at Growbricks. You know, we're, we're not looking to to grow an industrial or a, a amount of food. It's really, you know, it's the concept that we're pioneering is lifestyle farming. You know, it's not just about food. It's about doing it out there in the community and really getting people involved, whether that's employees in the workspace or students and teachers in a school or retirees mm -hmm. in a retirement home. Um, it's really about, you know, building an activity and a lifestyle around this. And the way that, that the product was designed, like you said, was to blend the aesthetics of a typical green wall. Singapore loves green walls. They're everywhere <laughs> with the functionalities of modern controlled environment agriculture. And, and we figured that if we found or designed a product that was attractive enough, then people might start doing it in more interesting places like mm. the lobby of a corporate or in a school or in a home or in a hotel or in a restaurant dining room. Mm. Um, uh, so so basically Matthew, if I could just jump in there and, and add that just to build a picture for our listeners, because as you said, vertical farming is not new to Singapore. There are people who do it as hobbyists. I, I actually made a documentary about it last year, and there are many people who have their own little vertical farms in their HDB apartments. Or hydroponics. Or, hydroponics yeah. around Singapore. I'm just trying to paint a picture here for our listeners. So how would it actually work day to day? So if you've got these individuals or communities with these vertical farms, would they then use the produce themselves or would it be sold on? How would it work? Yeah, so basically we turn up, we, we build a wall. It can take uh, as little as, as a couple of hours. We put baby plants on the wall um, and then we set everything to go. And part of the service that we provide is we come back once a week. After literally one week, you'll be harvesting. We bring in new baby plants. We mm. do the harvest with the customers. Uh, they get to do whatever they want with the produce. They can take it home for their families. They can donate it to a good cause. They can pretty much do whatever they like with it as long as they don't sell it because they don't have a farming license. And if you don't have mm. a farming license, you can't sell your produce at market. Sounds fantastic. Yeah. Sounds absolutely yeah, fantastic. What, and what about the size? Um, Lauren, as you're looking around scaling uh, solutions for cities, uh, some of the pictures I saw of grow bricks were uh, fairly uh, compact, maybe the size of a bookshelf you might buy from Ikea or something like that. Is that sort of the typical size that, that would be uh, that would be you know put in someone's home or maybe even in a, in a, in a, a senior's home or something like that? Absolutely. What, what you really hit on there, and Matt spoke to it as well, is Growbrix is a solution for health. It gives you healthy food, but it's really about engagement. It's about a conversation. So it's really a size that you could put in any office, any community center, um, any school and, and home. And I think as you know, as the director of an organization, it's an amazing thing to have in place as we're trying to bring people back to the office, right? And have much better employee engagement and conversations about our health and about the environment and really engaging people as part of the solution. And then I'll just speak as, as a parent, um, it's a really fantastic thing to have at home so that you can have the conversation with your children about where their food is coming from and what nutrition you're getting from a different lettuce or a different herb. Um, when, when we brought grow bricks into our house, our kids didn't know the difference between sage and basil, uh, <laughs> but now they do, and they know how to go and harvest it and which recipes require what, and it's a really, really engaging thing to have, and it fits almost anywhere. Hmm. Yeah, I mean, Matthew, I'm holding it up now, if I can, for the benefit of our listeners. It is a very aesthetically pleasing product. It does look really good on the Thank wall there. Much. I'm looking at it. Um, 
What stage are you at now with the product? I mean, you mentioned schools, which I think is a superb initiative. Are you in talks with schools, the Ministry of Education or, or with community clubs? What, what stage are you at in, in rolling this product out? Because it seems yeah, so an absolute you... no-brainer to me, Matthew. It seems absolutely no-brainer. Get it in the schools, get it in the community clubs, get the retirees working on it. It just sounds fantastic. Yeah, I mean, uh, so we, we did our pilot launch in July, which which Lauren joined as one of our first customers. And then we did our full launch in, in January of this year. And we're, we're fully booked out now for April. It's going to be going into some pretty exciting places. Uh, we're going to be moving into Little Farms in Tanglin on the 20th of of yes. april and then there's a couple of other sort of big names that are, I, I won't mention for now but if we touch base in the future we can talk more about it then um but i think the focus you know, like, like we, we'd love to work with schools um we've been speaking to a few but we haven't managed to land anything yet but i think our focus for the next two months is going to be corporates and really building on this concept that basically you know on site is the new off site so you've got all these corporates out there they want to do something that's good for the environment but perhaps they want to do something to promote singapore's food security issues Perhaps they're trying to, shall we say, coax employees back to the office, if just for two days mm. a week, mm. um, to bring them an engaging, interesting experience. Maybe they want to do something to promote physical health for their employees, and maybe they want to promote some mental well-being. So, from a Grobix perspective, we think this is a really interesting opportunity because we tick all of those boxes, and we can't think of many other things that do tick those boxes for mm. a corporate that's um you know making this transition now towards a hybrid working model and there's no uh, apparently from your material no soil no mess no weeds no weeding no herbicides no pesticides it's uh, it is truly an organic uh, organic farm is it not yeah basically we don't use any chemical pesticides and i suppose that the the thing that most people don't get is we come and do everything. So we come once a week. We encourage you to be as involved as you'd like. But if you literally just want a productive farm in your office lobby and have it look after itself, then that's the service that yeah. we provide. If just, we, if I, was, we, I was going to say, just to follow up quickly, yeah. Matthew, for the benefit of our listeners, how do you grow the plants then? Maybe you should just tell them. I mean, I can see it on the screen, but maybe you should tell them. Yeah. Well, we basically do the first three weeks of the plant's life at our facilities and working with farming partners. So the, the first three weeks is done by us. That's the hardest part. And then basically once the once the baby plants go onto the system in as little as two weeks, you'll be harvesting. So it's you know, we use we have our own technology. We use aeroponic technology, which is a form of soilless technology. It means the roots are exposed to air, so the plants grow faster. We have our own lighting spectrum designs, and we partner with um, uh, botanists, scientists here in Singapore for our own um, for our own nutrients. So it's a combination of those three uh, yeah. from a technology perspective, and then we wrap it in this nice service, which basically means that everything just works. And I think that's great because I know friends that have. Um, uh, their own um, hydroponic uh, little kits at home or something, but they've got to do all the work themselves. And a lot of times it falls by the wayside or they lose interest or whatever. So it's nice to know that you do follow up. Look, the question everyone's going to be asking for a single rack, if you wanted to put it in your home or a single rack in your office or wherever, what's it going to cost people on a monthly basis uh, to do this? And keeping in mind that they're going to save a little money because they don't have to buy fresh produce, et cetera. But, um, you know, what, what do the numbers look like? Okay. So basically for, for the, for the image that's that's being held up now, which is the smallest installation that we do for a commercial location, so that's kind of three of these racks, mm -hmm. if you like. So that's that's in the SBF Centre on Robinson Road at the moment. That's basically one two four nine to install, and then one two four nine a month, all inclusive. We come once mm -hmm. a week. So basically, for corporates, we do everything. For homes, uh, it's it's one of those acts rather than yep. three, which is typically enough to basically make. Uh, should we say a family of four leafy green cells sufficient? Um, and for that, you can either buy the equipment and then have this monthly subscription on the follow, whereby we drop, should we say, farmer's market crates of baby plants at your doorstep every two weeks. Uh, and then every, should we say, four months, we come and give it a deep clean. And that, mm. I suppose, is kind of similar to getting your air conditioning 
serviced mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and that you can you can buy the system for 1600 and then the monthlies are 100 or we've basically got a full rental lease option where there's no upfront commitment and then it's it's about one it's 179 a month and basically yeah. after four months if it's not for you you can opt out we'll come and take it away we are wow. and it's it's nice to know that there's that kind of lease option too because a lot of people are renting apartments and things like that or short st short stay and they, they don't necessarily want to own the hardware right they just want to use it and not have to take it with them when they leave or sell it when they leave yep yeah, and we're happy to provide all options it's um you know, I, I recognize that, you know, if you were to buy it, then it's quite a, a large upfront sum and you don't know whether you're going to like it. Um, usually when you buy a system like this in order to make it work, you've got to buy lots of other gadgets as well. Um, so the, the initial cost can be expensive. So the lease idea was really mm. a, a way of saying, OK, for the price of, should we say, two night staycation, you can basically <laughs> take this into your home for four <laughs> or five months and see if you like it or not. After that, mm. if you like it, then you can buy the product from us, uh, you know, and it's uh, at a at a price which reflects how long you've been leasing it, and yep. then the monthlies drop. So it's Smart. you can you can balance your upfront and your monthlies a bit like a mobile phone contract. You know, if you buy the handset upfront, you get a lower monthly. If you want a free handset, then the mm. monthlies are baked, then <laughs> then the price of the phone yeah. is baked into the monthlies. It's, it's, yeah. we're, we're flexible. We, we we don't mind. We just want to get the product out there. And finally, to you, Lauren, I've got a quick question from a listener and then a more broader philosophical one. From the listener viewer, Aloysius asks, is it hard to do if you're staying in an HDB flat because his particular unit doesn't have much sunlight, which is a good question. And more broadly, do you see this form of farming almost becoming inevitable for a big urban city like Singapore? So on the first question, actually, the way Matt has designed the system, it has its own lighting. It's custom. So you don't need sunlight um, to actually run the system. So in an HDB flat, it would work. All you need is an outlet. And then you actually control the lighting cycle and the watering cycle from an app on your phone. Anyone can do it. The busiest person can do it. Um, on the second part, yes, I think that urban farming is inevitable. Um, we have to create much more food secure systems in our cities. Um, long global supply chains are really inefficient in terms of energy, in terms of GHG emissions, um, and, and they make us vulnerable. So yes, I see this area really growing in the future, and it's really exciting to see appropriate kinds of solutions, right? different scales coming up. Oh, this is a fantastic uh, solution, you guys. Thank you so much for talking to us about it. If people want to get more information uh, about what you're doing um, with, uh, with Growbricks, where do they find you? Uh, if you go to the website, so www.growbricks.com, uh, there's all the information about our home offering and our enterprise offering, and there's basically a WhatsApp link on the website that will bring you straight to my handset. Perfect. So it's G-R-O-B-R-I-X. That's it. And uh, perfect. Thanks so much for being with us today, Matthew Howe and Lauren Sorkin of Growbricks. Appreciate your time. Thanks, Thanks for having us. us.